So, all right. I think we're ready to rock. We ready to go. Yo, 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 yo. Wisdom Talk Podcast, episode 38. 30. Well, well, 30. (laughs) 30, And then plus eight. You already know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, it's too old. I I, can't, I don't have three hands, y'all. I don't have yeah, three no, hands. Yeah, no, unless you're like so. a ninja turtle or some shit, you right? Gotta, you can kind of multiply you know that shit. You gotta like <laughs> throw it out. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's H two O. The camera on going. Horton here's who. Choice D. All of the above. You already know. <laughs> it's your boy Juniani. We are here for episode thirty eight. We getting these numbers right, man. I know. I know there's a few episodes been, where bro, we were there's a few episodes where we were kind of rocky, but rocky. you know we good now. <laughs> Episode 38, we are here once again. You know, we had to do like the all the dark the black. I I wish I had more black hats to do an all black affair like he Horton does. was saying, but I do. But I just didn't have that selection available right now. So yeah. this is what we rocking with. All right. But look, that's still some though, man. That's look at saying. all those recognized you know, labels, you know, man. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we versatile so, here, man. Right. So, we have a special returning guest with us. Mm-hmm. First time in the new studio. First time in the new studio, indeed. It's not even new anymore, though. Yeah, it's not. Because it's, it's not. I mean, long. we've been here for a minute, like for a quick minute. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But we here, and uh, you want to say what's up to the people? What's up, y'all? It's Jay Hall. How y'all doing? What up, what up, what up? Uh, Jay Hall, y'all. Jay Hall, y'all. I missed y'all so much. <laughs> y'all she is know. here once again, live at 5. Well, Mama Bear. 30-ish. Mama Bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just had to make it rhyme, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, so uh, what's, what's going on, man? What's What's been going down this week with you? Hmm, this week? I'm trying to think, like, has there been anything different out of the ordinary or just something? Well, it's not something that happened this week, but, like, I I got two things. One, I was just going to get into a little bit about a uh, boxing match this past weekend that Ryan Garcia won over okay. Devin Haney. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And to find out that Devin Haney was, like, dabbling with the Diddy parties and stuff. <laughs> Speaking of, hold on. I, I need. We need to give since we have a female perspective in here. You've been hearing about all the Diddy stuff, like a, a little bit. I don't really like what he's like um, convincing people to do, like Michael Jackson stuff. Or well, I, mean, <laughs> like, what's, I mean, what's like yeah. the actual like? But I you've that. at least heard like rumblings, right? Even yeah. though you're probably you, you haven't been fully <laughs> keeping up with it, but at least you've heard like. <laughs> Bits and pieces, like, okay, Diddy's in some shit right now. I don't want nobody coming after me, so. <laughs> oh, no. Man, man. See, that's got nothing to worry about, Mama man. Bear, Jay Hall, y'all, she man. always plays it safe. I know. She isn't trying to step over any to be bounds. so gentle. Don't come for me, Diddy. Oh, man. Nah. <laughs> don't ruin me before I begin, okay? <laughs> I know, right? You get canceled before you get even I'm start saying, popping no. off. <laughs> Seriously, like. No. They're already just waiting for your content to come out, man, and right. then you just man. get spam hate. Right. Comments. <laughs> but yeah, basically, Diddy. he's on some like, I wouldn't say Harvey Weinstein, which I want to bring him up too. Some stuff happened with him. But he's on some like Harvey Weinstein in a hip hop, hip hop way. Jeffrey? Jeffrey? Not Jeffrey Epstein. No, Harvey Weinstein. I know, I know, I know. Harvey, I was just Harvey. throwing, I was throwing in Jeffrey Epstein. I know you're talking about. Oh, okay, Weinstein. okay, okay. I was like, just, you know. Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. You know, like a cough. Why are their names so similar? You, 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 you feel me? That. Is that a coincidence? That weird. Look, I just started names, elaborating on why their names sound so similar because they're both from a certain group of people. Steens. <laughs> the I Steen people. Say, yeah. The Steins, the Steens. But, but, but what, do, what does that last name kind of come from? White like, folks? It sound, it's, a, it's, it's, a, not, yeah. it's not just white. Wait, it sounds... He dive okay. into the complexion. German. German. I mean, Steen. Oh, is it German? Weinstein. Weinstein or Steen, you know... I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. But I don't like, know. here's the truth. Here's the truth. Okay, okay. Let, right. Let's go. Because let's do this, it. this is what I, I was trying to avoid this uh-huh. because you know it goes back. It could go back to the Second World War mm-hmm. and how you said German, right? And then who 
that dude whose name we might not want to mention, who starts with H, last name. It rhymes with, uh, it rhymes with, uh, Tickler. Tickler. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. That's a good word okay. to rhyme with. So, That's great. yes. So, <laughs> his number one enemy were these people. Uh-huh. Holocaust and everything uh-huh. else like that. Jews? So, Jewish people? Yes, yes. You see how I try to avoid it. We, so, can, we can say Jewish. But, like, that, that, that St- Steen, Stein type of last name, first name, basis type of thing uh-huh. is integrated between the two of them. Mm. That's where the or, mm. origins come from. So it's related towards that. Interesting. So it's like, which side is it? Is it the evil German side or is it the victim Jewish We're gonna side? We're going to go with. Or is the victim Jewish side really not the victims and really the perpetrator? We're going to go with side? the evil German side. The evil German side? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to, I'm a, I, in these type of moments, I'm a conspiracy theorist in the way where I think it's blended. I think some. Uh, Possibly. Some of them boys, why I say that term. Are playing for the other side, mm-hmm. which is not good. True. So true. It's all about the power and the money dynamic. Like you know, the power, money is power, and everything else. Of course, those who have that level of power are not giving a fuck mm-hmm. about where they come from. And everything else. I'm letting you go, you know, because you know yeah. me, I could unravel about all this. You know? I know, but there's, there's, you, you there's YouTube guidelines too. Yeah, but. I mean, because I know your your argument is always well, it's the truth. But has there never been anyone you know, that's been canceled old for saying, saying there, the truth? There's an old saying: the truth don't give a damn about your feelings. But can the truth get you canceled? It depends on who's hurt by it. Yeah. So the people, it, well, we know who runs YouTube. And Leor, something, Leor Cohen. <laughs> you know who that is. Leor Cohen. Leor Cohen. Cohen. You know? Cohen. Yeah. He was like the co head of Def Jam with Russell Simmons. Oh, that makes sense too. And when it comes to the music industry. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, then that does connect. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Well, Let's he's say, like the head of YouTube, but excuse me. He's the head of like And um, he's a he's gonna be an advocate of a certain group of people. Subconscious, you know, subconsciously, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, prime example. I'm happy Jay Hall just is spectating over here, <laughs> observing. So yeah, so like, no, we're gonna, a we're, we're war. gonna hold on, hold on. Before there's you go, war. before you go, we're gonna get into some stuff that she's gonna unravel on. I know it because I, I we're gonna make that next. Yeah, we're gonna make that yeah, next. Yeah, she's gonna have some so, stuff so to say about have, that. So oh, you're yeah. gonna be dabbling into these deeper yeah. conversations. Yeah, she's, so she's gonna she's gonna so, have a lot. She's gonna have a. So there's a certain war going on, and then. You know, out of all the wars, there's many wars, but it's like one main war that we as America is a part of as far as supporting one side. And then there's this external country that is in more support of that other side that is not our side. I'm just coding like this. Uh But um, Iran, let's just say that country. Okay. And they jump in, they're attacking someone that we support. And it all connects and ties with the people who have power and where they come from and where their beliefs are in support. Are you talking about Israel? Us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> All right, damn, let's man. just get straight to the point. Yes, All right, okay. let's just get straight to the so, point. <laughs> the people also, the people who are pro Israel that are from, that, that are Jewish and everything else like that mm-hmm. also coincidentally run many of these platforms and they a lot of them run the media a lot yes. of them run banks a lot exactly. of them run Social a lot of well. aspects in society the youtube hollywood i mean yeah i mean youtube but, hollywood uh but like mainstream I, but like i always say media outlets the truth is the truth and the truth will always you'll always have people gravitate towards the truth you'll always have supporters of oh the truth. yeah 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 no so, you can have the supporters all you want but it's like as far as like platforms go as far as like the way they deliver the message, you're going to be limited the more you expose the truth that's inconvenient towards the people who have the power. But how do you think these platforms became these platforms? By support. Without, yeah, yeah, yeah. The but support. then that's why you have your guidelines. Right. But what I'm, but my thing is, if you always have support, no matter what you do. Yeah, they'll always find you. You're always, you're always going to be found. Yeah. Your pockets will always be blessed somehow, some way. Right? I agree. So that's the, the, the support is the root. Like, that's the grassroots. You know what I'm saying? That's how these platforms became so big is because they had support. 
Now, if you have support because you're, you're, you're yourself, you're not being fake, you're not like compromising to who you are and like your personality and yada, yada, yada. I believe that that's always going to have a fan base. Like you're always going to have somebody who believes in you. You're always going to have somebody who's willing to support you. If you're not being fraudulent, fake, you know, giving out a, a, a BS persona and message about things and yourself. Now, you know? w- now would you say going with that more authentic, uh, true to yourself route mm-hmm. that you're going to kind of in the same time at the end of the day, make it harder for yourself? I mean, walking in truth is not, it's always the harder route than walking in lies, you know, That's even true. though. Even though it's hard to, even though it's hard to, it takes a lot of work to like live a life of lies. It takes a lot of work. Think about it. Like you have to always like have a, okay, you start with a lie and then once that lie starts gaining track or once people start slowly unraveling and unpeeling that lie, then you have to come up with another lie to cover that up. Then you have to cover, it's like a chain. You have to keep going. Like dominoes. Yeah. Like, right. So it's like, that's so much work. Why don't you just like tell the truth? From the jump, like and just nobody be can real. even like be mad about it. Honestly, right? I I never get mad as long as I'm told the truth. It might hurt my feelings a little bit, but like I'll get over it straight up as long right. as it's the truth. Yeah, lies will hurt way more. That's that's big facts. Yeah, yeah, I agree. No, I I definitely agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, especially like when it comes to like individual to individual, like person to person interactions. Privately and everything else as well is best to just keep it real from the rip instead of telling them what they want to hear to avoid the confrontation mm-hmm. or the conflict, the possible backlash while you're keeping it real because you're really still looking out for the best interest. Right. I'm just looking at it in a broader scale mm-hmm. because, like, you want to reach to as many people of all demographics as possible, regardless if it's locally or globally. But that's the beauty of the truth, though. The beauty of the truth is that it doesn't care about demographics it doesn't care about feelings it doesn't care about yeah yeah i'm an advocate of facts over feelings you know what i'm saying so like as long as you're walking in your truth no matter the ethnic background no matter the race you're always going to have somebody willing to support you and like support you hard not like some half-ass support like you're going to have legitimate support and that's what you want you know that's where power is you know when you have like a backing that's real and genuine, yeah, no, you know? that's for real. Yeah, you know, you can't break that. Yeah. that you've, you've had some good answers. You've had some good answers. I cannot. <laughs> no. lie. I've tried, but you have you're unbreakable in this. Well, I mean, I'm, just, I'm not. I'm not trying to like you know stump stump H two O. You know what I'm saying? Oh but no, no, no. Because like I'm, I'm just, actually, I'm just speaking. I'm just talking out loud. You know what I mean? Hey, like, we gotta have these yeah. for the for the content. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's a good conversation because there's people on both sides that are gonna see it and like to see the back and forth, right? And everything right. else like that. Yeah. So, um, uh, Jay Hall, do me a favor. Lower the mic. We need to see your pretty face. I don't know how to do that. Oh, well. uh, t- twist it like the mic itself, the actual mic. Yeah, bring it down. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And then tighten it too. up. That works. Meow. Yeah. Meow. Meow. Got it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but you want to segue into the, the you know the thing you said we're going to talk about next about Where she's going to get she's yeah no about what she's very opinionated about probably maybe I don't know maybe what well, is it a certain, is that a certain scene. A certain scene. What happened? A certain scene. Like a, what scene are we talking about here? Oh, the uh, the good old race scene, huh? Oh, okay. Oh, y'all are talking about my people now. <laughs> <laughs> no, look. Okay, so tell him if you can recall, Jay Hall. Don't hit the play. Hit the game. Bars. You heard the bars though. Don't. Re- if you can recall, Jay Hall. Hey. <laughs> no. Recall, Jay yeah. Hall. Tell Horton about the conversation we were having about a certain type of person. <laughs> <laughs> I know he knows who what it is. What we're talking about is Wooks, and you know um, what a Wook is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know what a Wook. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm a sophisticated Wook. I, that's how <laughs> I would uh, describe. <laughs> What's a sophisticated Wook? Break this down for me. I'm trying to figure <clears throat> out what is this. Not so sloppy. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> so what are you trying to say about a, an original Wook? <laughs> Wooks can be all over Listen, the place. Listen, I've been on all they all can the be all over the place. That, but in, okay. in my opinion, a, a Wook is somebody that probably works in the music industry. Um, they get into shows for free. They're uh, they're yes. Yes, people. Nomads. Nomads. If, <laughs> if they don't have the money to get into that show, they're going to sneak into it somehow. Um, yeah, all the shows. They're everywhere. Yeah, and, all the uh, shows, regardless if they had the money for it or not. They probably live Journey with 20 pe people. Journey and people. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they probably live with, like, 20 people in, in like, a little house that yep. with, like, two, three people per Do room. odd jobs for the little money that they could get just to stay there. Listen, you know, everybody's been there, but a sophisticated right. Wook yes. can can live that life comfortably, can go out into the woods and camp and stuff, but also... Um, uh, afford it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, it's also capable of, okay. like, being a, a contributing member of society and, like, <laughs> maybe holding down a job or, like, okay. but okay. then goes it and is, is, a is a degenerate on the weekends. It is a community. So, wait, 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 time out. So no, you're telling me I, them with that one. I, know, I didn't mean yeah. to offend anybody with the degenerate word because I am uh, no no a no recovering no, degenerate. Word, no, I, no there's no okay. there's no harm in saying degenerate or offend. I mean, if people get offended, I then, claim it. So like, well, if someone's offended by you saying that, that that means it must you must have struck a nerve with the, with who they really are. Don't come for me. You gotta accept <laughs> who you are. Just accept it. If you're a DJ, and you're a DJ. If you if you if you engage in hedonistic behavior, you engage in hedonistic behavior. Yo, you're you're human. But you're see, but that's a good point though, because acceptance is like one of the major steps you got to take to become better. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You got to accept. You only want to improve once you're aware. Right. So, so, okay. What was I gonna say? I, it was on the what topic. How you we uh, how you I I perfectly described to somebody that you know that I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, but I'm not. Well, yeah, yes, but <laughs> um, so oh yeah, this is what he said. So Wooks have their own community, like they're their own like sector <laughs> in society. Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> like, uh, what are we? It's like Inception. Oh man, um, <laughs> what do y'all mean by a community? Like, they're their own like. Definitely, um, they kind of, uh, a lot of them might find themselves out on, on the streets or whatever, and yeah, they, oh, these looks out here, man, I fucking love y'all, but, you know, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> people will come together and um, form their own family and uh, hold yeah. down whatever kind of household situation it is, whether it's ideal or not, but yeah, they're. Okay. They're real and they they fucking ride out through like real hard times together. Just walking. Okay. okay. They just out here walking around, walking around being wooks and shit. Walking hey. and walking. <laughs> walking wooks. Walking wooks. The wandering wook is what I do whenever I need wandering a nap wook. at a festival. <laughs> <laughs> I go and find me a nap spot. <laughs> that kind of shit, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's nothing like super bad or detrimental, is it? No, it's just kind of like uh, they're. They're capable of thugging it out and like making it through it with the best um, like mindset possible. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. Nomad. Nomads, Nomad. for sure. Nomads. And Would y'all consider them like, like indirect <laughs> squatters to uh, a certain degree? I, indirect squatters. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they are the same, but. Um, they kind of, they, they, they move around I mean, too anybody much. could squat. Squ squatters implies that they stay somewhere overdo their welcome. So, mm. like, Wooks, they kind of move around more frequently, but they all over the place. Right. But they don't stay in one place. More like cow choppers. Exactly. Okay. That's even really rude and derogatory. Forgive uh, me. Uh, yeah. like, see, she's always a That's what I'm saying. You're always so gentle. I like, love everybody. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like if you're a homosexual, you'll take a girl in or right. a guy in that uh -huh. just moving cows to cows, but, hey, you can stay with me. I get some yams, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, homosexual. Oh I'm man, homosexual. Like, Wisdom Talk I'll Podcast, a, episode thirty-eight, y'all. I'll take a homeless chick if she's bad enough. She can stay with me for a couple Jeez. days, weeks. Maybe I'll a call you if I ever need a place to stay, Horton. <laughs> right, right. Hey, man, I just hey, you get some saying? yams while I want some yams. You know, you know, I got you. Ah, We're free. You know, so you got. Funny. 
Hot water, <laughs> lights, everything like that. Jeez. Bro. We got eggs in the in the fridge, you know? Jeez. Yeah. Eggs, cheese. Since we're talking bread, about all that, Wooks can live with all of without all of that. To throw that out there, Johnny. Wooks okay. don't need the water. They don't give a shit. Okay. Yeah. If uh if they got if K. they got food, they'll do drugs instead of food. Yeah, you know got, what I'm saying? They got K, Molly, and all the other stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is true. Okay. Yeah. It's like, man, what's the last time you ate? No, I don't know. I have no idea. But they're real generous and they share everything that yeah, they have whatever with they each do, other. Super whatever generous. they have on deck okay. is for everybody. Interesting. Yeah. What? Well, how they got it? I don't know. Bro. I love my Wookie Woodland folks, bro. Like, I love y'all. Please <laughs> come find me. So, like, pop so, out the woods and say hi at a festival if you see me. So, do you? Are you cool with any Wooks or connected to any of them? <laughs> yeah, of course. Are you? Yeah. Like I, I know because like I've been I've been like Snapchat groups and all sorts of other organization type of things where it's Wook affiliated. That word I feel like it came from Star Wars. Is that true? Cause, like Wookie. Yeah, like the is that a thing Chewbacca, in Star? Wookie, yeah, Wookie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is it exactly? I should no. look it up. Because Chewbacca, Chewbacca is a Wookie, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But. So, uh, like, is there a connection here? Like, that's what I'm... Probably. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just probably. Asking, I'm just asking the curiosity questions. All right, I'm just... <laughs> As someone who raves and watch Star Wars, <laughs> I, know, I can see it. I never connected it. <laughs> right, right. But I can see it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and you then, like, the thing why it's called Wooks is because, like, it's, there's, like mu- there's a certain music that goes with Wooks. Right. And it's like, well, wonky. Wonky, wookie music. And it's just like, wom, 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 wom. Yeah, but at the same time, it has a beat to it. It has a flow to it. Oh, my God. I looked it up on but Wikipedia. It's like a trend. Yeah, what does it say? What does it say? Oh, my God. Does it connect? It is so fucking. I feel like it's fucking so derogatory. I can't even oh, read damn. it out loud. Hold on. Oh, no, I'm about no. to pull actually, it up. On, I'm actually, about to pull it up on the computer. Jay yeah, Hall, you Jordan, it. read it. You it, read it. I want to hear you it read it. It was saying things like smelly like, hair, blah blah blah, dread heads. It originated in the nineties. Because she's such a sweetheart. Because <laughs> she's such a sweetheart. I want to hear her read it. Oh what is? God. It'll be the one less likely to read it. What is uh, a wook? Like rave scene wook is it in comparison to Star Wars? A wook is wook a person. A, a wook is a person deeply immersed in the what? Wait, a wook is a person deeply immersed in the jam band or hippie music scene, often Damn. attending concerts and engaging in the community. They typically favor music with improv- improvisation, improvisation, and a psychedelic sound, yeah. dressing in bohemian style, and are sometimes associated with psychedelic drug label. use. I got another one but over here. It's on okay, point, though. okay. Let, let's see. What's Wook now? or Wookie is a sometimes derogatory word for a hippie that frequents EDM and jam band concerts and festivals. The word has been used as early as the 1980s, originally mm. comparing hippies to a Star Wars Wookie due oh. to their hair. In memes, see. Wooks are. Commonly associated with drugs, bad hygiene, a lack of oh. interpersonal awareness, white person with dreads, and fru- <laughs> frugality. Hey, put the camera on my face right now. <laughs> Yo. Well, Is that accurate? It. That sounds super accurate to me, and I'm not even like in it like that. But I told you the connection. Look. I, I've Wars. always thought about it, honestly. Yeah. I to- I knew it. It just sounds, it, they're too similar. Bruh. The, the, just the word. <laughs> I'm clipping this. I'm clipping this. For that. <laughs> Not just because of the similarity of the word. Damn. They They sound too alike. But like, when, when both definitions m- mesh together, yeah. it's perfect. I'm I, I'm telling it's you, perfect. man. Like little pieces from this one and that one, but like you put it all together and with little parts of this one and that one out, and this part and that one put in. With our yeah. powers combined, yes, we'll exactly. Figure out what the fuck that was some, Captain, <laughs> right, some right. Captain Planet shit, right? <laughs> Shoot, man, I see, I see, crazy. I know. Damn, my people. Hey, 
The only thing I would say, that's why I was like, bits and pieces took it out, is that it was like specifically white people. With, like, dress. I love how they yeah. threw it in the last. Uh, the white sentence. people with dress. <laughs> the white people with dress. I'm like, bad hygiene. Wooks <laughs> don't have no discrimination. I've seen Hispanic, black. I've seen all right. wooks. Right. I'm like, they don't have no discrimination on how the wooks look. My best friend's a black. But like, look. because it's like when you hear hippie. Hi, Cisco. <laughs> Cisco Shout out to Cisco. I love though. you. Cisco is the real one. Pirate King himself. Yeah. Pirate like, King himself. Him. Yeah, he's black as hell from Ailey. <laughs> And he's from A-Leaf. Come on, black nigga from A-Leaf. Hey, he's a wook. <laughs> he's a super wook. And I'm like, I don't know if that Jeez. fits the description that they just mentioned. That's so, crazy. Yeah. But like, it's because when they when you think of hippie, you think of a white person with dreads. That's what that's what like, I think like, immediately Woodstock, when it comes Woodstock to my mind. Yeah, shit. Woodstock. Yeah, uh, Ching Chong and all that. Yeah. I'm like, man, it's 2024. Dog. Get with the program. Man. Right. I'm thinking still, it's the boomers definition. Right. <laughs> So, so let me ask both of y'all a question since we're on the rave topic. Go ahead. What do y'all think about the scene in general? Oh, like how it's been like from whenever we came to what it is now? Yeah. So I like feel. how has it affected y'all in a positive way and in a not so positive way? Like what has, how has the rave scene impacted your lives? Shega. Yeah, you, you go, go first. Yeah, yeah you go you, first. you you on the couch. Go ahead. Yeah, um, <laughs> man. I mean, it's uh, kind of, it keeps me young. Honestly, it gives me something to look forward to. Um, I don't know why it took me thirty three years of my my existence to start listening to EDM music. I guess all the other music was. Uh, I feel that. Like you know, you can only listen to. Uh, I was so a late much. bloomer. Yeah. I feel that. I mean. I went through stages with all all music. You know, I went through country stages. I did backup singing for a country band when I was in Dallas. I have been in the hip hop scene, screamo scene, but uh, I love how they can take those older songs and make it a whole ass new song with a new new beat, same words, yeah, same lyrics. And That's uh, got me too. But I, I've met. Some of the most amazing people um, going to shows and raves and festivals. Uh, people are literally the kindest. If you meet people at festivals, they always have like pockets of little trinkets and gifts to give you. And um, the online communities are just like un unlike any other, uh, I guess. That's very true. And I I've met some very uh, lost folks in this scene as well. And... Um, some of them have put me out financially and emotionally, but uh, that's all, you know, if you don't allow people. You, I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot since I've been in this scene, and it's it's taught me um, that I, I it's very important to me to, to move through life without uh, looking back and being like, why the fuck did I do that? Or why did I allow these people to do that to me? So it's mm. just like, uh, you know, just like anything, you meet – Good, bad, but uh, uh, it's been it's been mostly good. Honestly, I've I've met some of the most incredible folks, and uh, people are creating new genres and stuff in this scene every day. Like I'm gonna give Slab a uh, notable mention over here yep. because he. Shout w, out to Slab. W Mike. What's Mike up, Slab. my crows? Mike. Shout out to Slab. Yep, w that, Mike. That, that Denny's uh, late night. Go out. Hey, dope. just a side note. Slab helped me out a lot when I was doing the hip hop thing. He got me in my crew, legendary music team, our first rave scene hip hop performance at his event for Screwed Up. That's what's up. Juneteenth. Yeah. And everything else for a Screw Weekend. That's what's up. Uh, June 28th and everything. We got to perform. Shouts to Slab for looking out for us for that. And been a homie since then. And that was, like, back in, like, 2021. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, nothing but vibes. Every time I see him, That's what's nothing up. but love. Appreciate That's what's you, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Slab, That'd you create slab. music I wish uh, that I dreamed of. The first time I heard him playing in, in the church, uh, my eyes were, like, watery. I, like, was just filled with all the uh, – it, it was a very emotional thing. I think it was 
obviously like a, a Houston song, but mm-hmm. with his EDM twist on it, and it was chopped and screwed. And uh, exactly, man, hold up, that's my shit. <laughs> it's the whole keep fact. doing it, Mike. Keep it's doing the whole it. fact. Keep chopped and screwed alive. For yeah, because sure. I don't, I don't really EDM hear with the screwed and chopped. Right. Yeah, I don't really hear, but just chopped and screwed in general. Exactly. Like I don't really hear too many. DJ's doing that Still anymore. And I love Chopped and Screwed. Chop. Exactly. That's what we grew up on. It gives it like it so. can literally turn a song into a whole nother record. Exactly. Like, yeah, a whole nother genre. Whole nother genre. Like, right? You can make rap sound like R and B. Right. Just because of how you screw it. Screw yeah. it and chop it up. Oh, oh. And it's a shame too. Like I don't really hear too many Houston DJs like doing it or implementing it no more. I know. It's crazy how they I've noticed this even from coming from hip hop to EDM to just blending the two. Right, is that I see more EDM DJs showing love to screw and chop than hip hop DJs. It's crazy. And that's crazy, the irony right? of it. Is the that irony. they appreciate it more than the regular hip hop. Keep because that because they want to stay relevant with the modern music. The new trending songs, but they like, don't go back to the roots as frequently. Like some of the beats that I've made and like some of the records that I made, like I'll just mess around with them and like screw them up and chop them up. Like in my in the program that I'm using, like I'll I'll do that just to like play with it and have a different sound in it. Oh, sometimes exactly. it sounds better, like exactly. slowed you know slowed up, it's like screwed a up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you I know? can I can agree with Jay Hall as far as the racing socially. Yeah, I was gonna say the, yeah. So what about you? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> no. That's why I got you, bro. I got you. Okay, okay. Teamwork, dream work. Yeah, yeah. So um, socially, it I just elevated socially, uh, meeting all these different types of people from different walks and everything. And our one common term of interest is music. We just love the flow of music, and mm-hmm. we just even though we come from two different complete walks of lives, two different beliefs and ideologies, everything else, but both of our loves for music builds such a genuine friendship from then on. Mm. And it just started with music, even though we might even not, we can, we can even agree to disagree respectfully, mm-hmm. but because we had that common interest, we could build off of that still. Right. And it just shows that it's bigger to life than just only be around people that are like you or look like you or think like you or wherever else. But you could just get along with anybody, no matter what walk of life, just because you just appreciate the little things. Right. And that's what I saw from there. And then, of course, there's where positive comes negative. Yin and yang. And yin and yin yang. yang. And that does also come with learning, even though you build these connections with some people, that y'all are still different. And that's going to show over time which ones are actually have more integrity and more good proper morals and ethics, even if you don't always see eye to eye with them. But, like, it's not on some hidden agenda, stab you in the back type shit, mm. and just look out for themselves the first chance they could get, even at, your, at the detriment of your cause. Right. So you have to, even though it's such a, genu- a generous community and everything, and everyone does come off real friendly and everything, there's a lot, of, there's just like any other environment, there's going to be people who are, they might be cool with you at the moment. But as soon as times get hard for them, they'll take anyone down with them. It's like, mm. okay, you can swim, you can swim, but then you start panicking, and then the next person, the person next to you, you'll fucking dunk their head so, so you can survive. Mm-hmm. Type shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't have much to say about that one. Yeah, you asked the question. You got you the know, answers. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not me, I'm not really into the rave scene. Like, not like I'm not saying I'm saying You've I'm been not dabbling into it. more of lately. Lately, on some like, not because I fully intended to. It was more like because it kind of like unraveled that way. So I was like, all right, I mean, place and time. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, I can't really speak on it too much because I'm I haven't been in it like y- you two. So yeah, yeah, you haven't been like really, years. Yeah, I haven't been years. No, not at all. Yeah, but you know. Because so. I was also a late bloomer, like Jay Hall is, was saying as well. But my late blooming was 30. Okay. Now I turned 34 this year. So how long so. have you been, do you think you've been in the rave scene? I said I was 33 earlier, and that was completely inaccurate. But um, I, in the rave scene, I kind of got into it. Um, Not like, like when like you right? got into it, because like we probably both got into it in our 20s. 
at different you think times. So? I, I went but to like first, actually yeah. to take get into it like on a regular basis mm. was definitely thirties. Yeah, the first time I ever went to a rave was uh, actually one of uh, Buddha Love's like silo events back. I was like twenty something years old. Yeah, exactly. And there's actually an event tonight at the silo, which is crazy. It's been so long. Damn. But, Damn. Um, Indeed. Yeah, like when I started working, um, working events and stuff was kind of like, I guess when my brother started the church, mm -hmm. um, when I was in it r real heavy, just. 2021? Yeah. 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 Because I remember when Landry did start the church. Yeah, he came Because that was around the time and that me and Rob and everyone else started coming up, like Rich and Mason and. Yeah, all of them, Bonnet. Speaking of, of, like, that, that now that you mentioned the church, I remember a conversation that me and you had about, like, being in certain, Nando, like, Mark. events where, like, the energy just feels, like, weird and dark. Yeah. Is that me and you that had that talk? It's the after. I think it was, yeah. It's the after. Is it so, the after? So, like, church is cool until after two. Right. And then that's when it gets real dark. <laughs> You're like, at, then after that. And it gets like, real dark because yeah. then that's where the druggies are just, like, pounding the shit because it's the only thing that's going to keep anything interesting. Yeah. And it's just a lot of fiends and stuff and shady shit starts going on. And you know what? Speaking of, like, and that kind of connects me back to Chopped and Screwed, right? I love Chopped and Screwed music. I love it. But there is a, a, a very, very high potential of it to kind of go left <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying track. with the with the with the sound of it yeah. the energy of it the frequency demonic. of it of how it's played demonic yeah demonic yeah. yeah there's a way there's a there's a there's a side of it that it can go where it doesn't need to go <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, but yeah. um yeah and that, like, i think that's what we were talking about the other like day Christ repel. right yeah there's a you know there's just certain certain venues and um promoters that whenever they throw events that they seem a, a little more like eerie and um, I'm not really eerie, but yeah, like there's a Fuck darkness. stereo. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm stereo. No, nah, no worries. <laughs> I said that. I've been saying yeah, yeah. this for multiple <laughs> podcasts now. Like, yeah. I, like you can go back to like earlier episodes. I've been saying fuck stereo. Fuck stereo. Yeah, fuck, fuck stereo. stereo. Stereo Live is trash. Fuck them niggas. <laughs> they weren't always trash. <laughs> Since they came back, they've been trash. Fuck them niggas. Staff is trash. Fuck them niggas. Hey. Not everybody on Wisdom Podcast, Wisdom go. Talk Podcast, condone. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I rock with it. I mean, that. I don't know them, so it's it's fucking uh, too. If you're saying that, I... I mean, I, I don't think I've already said that line before. I'm like, not everybody so. on Wisdom Talk Podcast yeah. condones yeah, yeah. in agreement with anything yeah, yeah. that is said on Wisdom the disclaimer Talk message. Podcast. Yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah. nah, but I mean, I don't know. So if you're nah, saying that, I've bad, seen then, a, it's too know. many bad experiences, not even just for me, but like people that I, I'm cool with or associated with. Yeah. Like they've left my homegirl that was drunk outside to catch an Uber by herself, and she's like 90 pounds. Yeah. And Cause she was throwing up in the in stereo live, and they kicked her out and left her by herself. Damn, shit like that. That's mm. inhumane. People really just like that's when inhumane, someone's intoxicated. Bro. Others really just like are you not got, like understanding imagine, in that moment. It, exactly, mm. they just feel that person can't even function. It, fucking help. Right. Ninety pound girl. Help. <laughs> leave her outside to catch her own Uber. Like guys can't take advantage of her. Like. That's the type of shit. Like, I got there like ten minutes after finding out, and I was ready to pop off. I was ready to like, who 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 was it? Let me talk to him because mm -hmm. I'm confrontational like that. Let me find out. I just want I just want to have a conversation. But if you don't like something I say, then we could go there. Right. That's how it goes with me. And and people don't expect that from me because Horton's such a nice guy. But I'm like, that's a, just like a nice guy. I'm I'm willing to go there. I have a question. Sidebar. What do you sip? Is that an MD twenty twenty? Can you pass that thing though? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is an MD twenty twenty. I don't know how much is left. That's okay. Keep your reaction. You, the only reason, <laughs> if I had some actual liquor, I would. We will all be drinking. I would. Add some I mean, I don't know if I would, but I may take like a sip or two, maybe. But but like this is fucking MD twenty twenty. What I, color I like, you got I, over there, sir? Yeah. What what flavor is that? What is uh, that? Electric melon. So it's green. <laughs> no, it's pink. Oh, cute. <laughs> 
I just I, cause it's all wrapped up. I'm like, I what is this? I'm doing it for a reason. I'm like on my hood shit right now. I don't want to see him what... shit. I know, right? He said Sido. Yeah, I had to raise my hand in the class. What the fuck are you drinking? Right. I had to raise my hand in the class. I'm like, yo, hold on. Ma'am, I have a question, ma'am. I usually have my water jug. I didn't even bring it in. Oh yeah, the red joint. Yeah, yeah. I usually have my my clean alkaline hydrogen water. Clean alkaline. Yep. Yep. I'd be on the healthy uh, tip, y'all. I'd be on the health tip. You want to know some more? Hit me up. Hit your boy up. <laughs> <laughs> he, while he's All sipping right. on, a, uh, on an MD 2020, <laughs> I'm over here trying to promote health. Hey, <laughs> stay positive, y'all. My dumb ass just over here cool you know, in Corbin. You know, that's why I work right. well. I was about to ask you about that. Exactly. Like, who's your friend over there? Like, what, what? I didn't want to be alone on this damn couch. I heard I had all this space, and I just yeah, didn't want do. to do it. So I brought my new homie. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you did you uh, pick him up at the Astros game? I actually got this one at a thrift store. I have a smaller one. at a thrift store. How much? Really? Fucking two dollars. Two dollars for that? What? This thing is like thirty at the game. Look at me. That's what I was about to say. You know, at the game they'd sell that thing for like thirty. I don't play. Excuse but, yeah, me. Yeah, I didn't want to be alone over here, so I brought him with me. <laughs> Since we were passing by the, I uh, remember, the stadium on the way. Yeah, I right, remember right. I I bought my nephew uh, because me and Carletta went to downtown aquarium, and she never been. I heard and I bought that. and I bought uh I bought my nephew a stuffed doll. That little nigga was twenty six dollars. Man, you better re- take that back. No, he already I ain't got buying it. That. He already got it. That was like this was like two years ago at least. I met a friend mm-hmm. at a. a and after hours one night that does the caric- caricatures at the aquarium. Wow. And the dude that just sits there and draws everybody. I can't. Um, God forgive the, the, me. The little sketch thing? Yeah. Like he just drawing people in, within seconds? Mm-hmm. Damn, I should have had Carla do that shit. He was cool as hell. So um, forgive me, friend, if you're seeing this. It I was like, it was name, like during the weekday, though. <laughs> we went like on a Tuesday or a Thursday or something. Yeah, it's probably weekends. It was probably a, right. there. He's probably out there right. on the weekend. More likely, I would assume it was. It wasn't so packed. I, that's why I did it. I wasn't trying to be there with all them people over there. And shit. <laughs> right, Fuck right. That shit. Yeah. We got to touch the stingrays and all the other shit. Mm-hmm. It was smooth selling. I haven't been to the aquarium in a minute. That's where I had my prom. What? Your prom was at the aquarium. Yeah, that was my first time there. The hell, did you go to high school? A Leaf Taylor. Really? Yeah, at, it's the hood at the aquarium. That's wild. You know where ours was? Mine was in, like, downtown high-rise. Like See, that's rooftop. better than the aquarium. Yeah. That, that's, that, like, some private But shit. you got to remember where where I went to school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. I went to Cinco Ranch. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like. Did you go to school in Katy? I went, yeah, I went to Taylor. She went Katie to, Taylor. See? I, uh, we I played y'all in football. Katie Taylor's more. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it used no, to be huge whenever we play y'all. You, you, and your, you and my brother. Yeah, yeah, play yeah, against yeah, each other. Yeah. I used to always be at the games. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even. I don't think I went to my prom because I went. My my boyfriend in high school was like a year older than me, and I did his prom. I'm like, I don't even fucking like these people at my school. I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my girlfriend at the time was because she was two years younger than me. So she, she went to my prom. It was her sophomore year. So she ain't. Go with prom her senior year. Yeah, I was I was kicking it. She with got the prom experience too. with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. It was uh, I did my homecoming though. Did my homecoming. I only yeah. did homecoming my senior year. Fuck all the mother Same. homecoming. It's mm-hmm. not my homecoming, right? So. <laughs> I think I did all the dances except for. I wasn't about to go to prom, but this girl asked me. Like mm. this, she was new though. She was from Miami. She just moved to Katy. So she was new from Miami, moved to Katy. It's and Cuban her chick. Eyes, yeah. Her eyes were set on Junior. Yeah, her, <laughs> she's a Cuban girl. Her name was Kathleen. Man, I've been trying to look for her for a minute, too. Not like Kathleen. that. Kathleen. Yeah, Kathleen, what's Find up? This man. You know what I'm saying? We, st- I'm still alive. We still here. This nigga said not like that. He trying to keep a G, man. No, 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 no for real. No, no, no. No, because after prom, I literally haven't seen her since then. Like, she, like, disappeared. That's why I'm curious. I'm like, what are you? Are she, is she did alive? She, did she She's graduate? Still, Where yeah. did you go, Kathleen? I know. So right. she was in your grade. Yeah, she was. She was. And she grade. graduated. Mm-hmm. So you haven't seen her since she graduated. Last time I heard from a bird that the word was. <laughs> <Bars>. <laughs> I heard from a bird that the word was. Uh, 
that she was a real estate agent. She was in the real estate, like heavy. But you think she married? I don't know. Maybe. Like five kids. She was fine though. She got five kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just because she's fine, she got to have kids. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know. Well, hey, Jory, you have a kid? Yes. Okay. Um, Shout out to Sunny. Our, <laughs> one meticulously yeah. made child. Shout yeah. out to Sunny. How many, how many uh, girls on our on our panels that have been mothers? Roof mama. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, look, I'm just thinking of attractive girls, and I'm just even using our platform to do so. And the likelihood it is, at our age, most of them probably have, Maybe. have babies. Yeah, I exactly. Agree. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, you talking about high school prom? Where is she now? Yeah, there's a good chance she does have a child. At least, at one. least one. That's the yeah. bare minimum. Yep. <laughs> it's not. Yep. The, it's not to say all be all. It's not. It's not, not at all. I don't care about the kids unless if you unless there's. I don't give a damn if a woman has a child, unless they're not taking care of that child, unless the child's running amok. Excuse me. Unless she has just you know a bunch of babies, kids running around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nah. You need to take care of your children first before we even think about get your damn kids out the streets, lady. Right. <laughs> you see them street lights? They on. Get their asses inside. Yeah. That's how it's so, supposed to be. Right. That's how it was for me. Facts. Same. And y'all need to spank y'all's children. You, what, what's up? What's wrong with a with a little ass whooping? My bruise is like a motherfucker. If I sp- I cannot like. Uh, I mean, at I least give him a pop. Good one time, and my f- purple fingerprints were on his little like butt leg, and I was like, "Oh shit, bro." I'm so I ain't sorry. Lie. That's, well, here's a different, the, that's a different perspective when you're white. Yeah. Because, like, they bruise easily. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Because sure. I'm like, man, my mom used uh-huh. to whoop my shit up. And man, like, what? I want to whoop his ass like your mama used to whoop yours, but I just <laughs> fucking can't because I'll go to jail see, or he'll exactly. get taken from me. Like, they have to, like, actually get take off some skin for it to actually be, but like, see, something bad. Like but see, that. here's the thing, though. Just like the whoop, him, whoop him with his clothes. Like, don't, like, hit skin. Hit clothing. <laughs> He like oh, the impact does make. Let me ask you. Let me ask. Let me ask. Because it's got to be like bare to. skin. Because if not, he'll look at me like yeah. <laughs>, laugh. Stop that is at you. true. <laughs> from a mom, right. from a mom to a, a son, like yeah. I was laughing at my mom's beatings like early. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie. My dad had to step in quick. I have to use slides on. I had really. to get that. I had to feel that manpower. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this: In the humble. when you were a child, <laughs> didn't you get beatings? Yeah, dude. I used to get tore up. I know you did. My dad had a, a fraternity <laughs> paddle that he would Damn. that he would whoop our ass with until my mom was like, hell no, and broke it over her knee. <laughs> and then she started That's squaring up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her, see? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, That's we not used, your typical white family. But see, here's, here's my point, though. Here's my point. Our generation... That's used true. to get beatdowns, like that's you know true. what I'm saying. And let I me think take we, the race part. Uh, yeah, take, that's, well, yeah, yeah that's more say, of a generation. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I not think going. all millennials got the ass beat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not. You yeah. know, look at me, not including are race. We millennials. We are all millennials. We are millennials. Oh. Yeah. Millennials stop at 97, 98. That's when you get to Gen Z. That's when you get to. Gen and then Z. it starts at 81, 82. I saw a list recently. I don't know if the, if this was on social media or not, but I saw a list of like them listing each generation from nineteen from like the late eighteen hundreds all the way up until now. Mm-hmm. Nineteen oh one between nineteen oh one and nineteen like twenty, they're considered the greatest ge- generation. That's their name. The greatest. That's what they call them. That's what they call Damn, them, greatest that's generation. That's fucked up. That's that a few of them you know still alive. Huh? That's they didn't a few even of them have no alive. electricity at that point. How the fuck was that the greatest? <laughs> Because they survived through all that shit. I guess so. Y'all thugged it out, bro. They did. Their parents. R.I.P. Some mom, of their parents were probably slave, are slave su- owners. My mom's a super boomer. She's super boomer? What's that? Oh, yeah. How old is she? 69. She was in the baby boomer era then. Yeah. Same thing with my mom. My parents are right dad. about that, that age as well. Yeah, I think our parents were baby boomers. All of ours. Yeah, for yeah. sure. My mom knows about the British invasion. The Beatles and all that. 
<laughs> I was dead ass serious. I thought you were talking about like an actual invasion. You said the Beatles. Jesus. <laughs> Good Lord. Hey, I was like, oh. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, me too. Right. <laughs> my, no, no, no. My mom, my mom's the first wave feminist. Like for real. She was she was, into that? Like, yeah, movement? she was like, yeah, she was big on that shit. Yeah, my mom. She's out there fighting for like yeah, rights she, and stuff. Like, like she moved here. Like she moved here early '80s from England. Okay. She was fighting back in college at Oxford. Really? Yeah, she was out there with the staff. She so was she was protesting. like a part of like the movement. Yeah, story? yeah. I, 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 me and her go back and forth. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's interesting. I, mean, I, I didn't mean, know your mom was. Is, I didn't know she was uh, yeah, in the trenches. Because like, the, like I, it wasn't until like two years ago. I was like, "Mom, are you a feminist?" Yeah. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like "Well, that's like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, duh." What you, do you think? Like, I'm not. I wasn't able to step up and help out when your dad got sick. If it wasn't for me being a feminist, <laughs> yeah. Like, Damn. So we're ops. <laughs> Jeez, Godly. but she's oh, the first man. wave. I didn't know there was waves until after I found out my mom. Was I didn't a know there was waves either. I, so I just put them all in. Right one. now, it's fourth wave feminist. First wave is that men and women should Margaret be Sanger. Equal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like more of the uh, suffrage, suffragettes, and all that stuff. It's like uh, starting off with the rights to vote into. Um, Working laws to sexual liberation, like, but my mom fell off before sexual liberation. Though. Okay, okay. Her birth control. She a lady. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's still a lady, but she still wants to be treated as an equal in the workforce. Right, right. So, I, and that's why I'm like, you know, I don't mind that. I don't mind that because women should also be given equal opportunity to be able to provide for themselves. Yeah, it should be an option. Yeah. Where it started going south was that they started thinking that like. I'm saying they like man, that sounds terrible. But um, I'm it's, saying it's like more proper. Yeah, exactly. It's more. It's more along the lines of the women that were advocating towards it at that time. They started wanting to believe that they're better than men. That's where it got started getting toxic. Well, it's like the whole original aspect is just that you know, men and women should be granted the same level of opportunity right. to provide for one another. I mean, provide for oneself or not, or to go more of a traditional route and everything else. Mm -hmm. But then when it started going south was that they wanted to start diminishing men and and empowering women while diminishing men. And that's the part I don't and like. that's what and that's where we're like that's the conflicts of this <laughs> modern day. I did like how you say um, start. Oh my gosh, you said start um, providing for each other, mm -hmm. and then you were like, uh, but I think that's such a such a nice way to look at like creating a family is providing for one another. It's not just like a mm. one ended thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because originally, mm. before feminism started, it was like the man's the pro sole provider and protector, security, everything. And the woman stays at home, nurtures, and like, you know, it was just like a one dimensional aspect where like the gender roles type of things, like, man is known for this. Woman is known for that. I I'm not like all the way with that because really I'm not. I know I, as much of a traditionalist. Really, as I am, where did this change your heart? This is brand new to me. I not, you know what I'm saying. I want to hear this. Yeah, I know, right? He's been pondering. Wait, what, what's going on here? I know. Let a me lot hear this. Of times we're 38 episodes into the podcast. A lot of times <laughs> people like to think of me as the type of person who's like absolute strong in my ways that. It has to be the man provides, the women, manly woman follows and everything, even though that part I agree with. But the whole idea that the man is the sole provider and the woman is the sole nurturer mm. and the one that's more submissive and everything else. Right. I do not. I'm, I have always said this, but I haven't like, uh, I haven't like spoken on it as free as much as I could have is that it's 70, 30. I say that the man should take, 70% and the woman take 30%. I like because, the odds. Yeah, and <laughs> the reason why I say that is because, like, the woman's the one who are having the kids and have to take st take that time off. So in that time span of having to step up and take that time off, that the guy has to step up and provide for that time span, 
is where those traditional values still lie, absolute, in those ways. But then, like, generally speaking, knowing that most households are going to be too income-based because not everybody could be that person to provide, to be the sole bread, bread for, provider in our economy, right. and inflation and everything else, Right, is that it's more idealistic that the woman works but doesn't prioritize work as long as she has a, a man and family. Mm-hmm. That she works optionally, electively, but still can help out and all that. But the guy is See, more prioritizes okay. it. And that's here's, where I get at. Here's where I differ. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I think that it should be situational. It the the pull, the give and take, the pull and the tug should be depending on the positioning of each person. For example, I believe, let's say, okay, let's just keep it real simple. If the man is down in life and is trying to get on their feet and they're with a woman who is on their feet more so than him and she's on a higher trajectory than he is, then I feel like it's okay for that woman to carry the load for a little, until this man gets on his feet, then y'all can carry it together, right? Now, opposite, like let's say the woman's down and she's with a man that's kind of up, you know, then I think it's okay for the man to carry the load until she gets up with him and then they carry it together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it should be like depending. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that you said that. I'll let you, I'll let you go. Yeah. And this is going to be my counter. Uh huh. Is that that sounds good because it's like equally yoked type of thing, like a partnership. That's what we're talking about. But, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. Because it comes back to the fact that man lead, woman follow. And this way, it doesn't mean that women are inferior to men, but it's just that women are going to be better in a follower's uh, position than the man is going to be in the follower's position and the woman leading. Because, like, when a woman is leading, it comes with a time limit. Well, it comes with uh, a shot clock. Well, yeah. That the guy has to step up at some point. Well, but if the woman is not. That breadwinner, the guy isn't going to just be expecting her to step up. In well, most cases, guys are prepared to be that. Well, here's what I'm saying, though. Like, if you're in a relationship that's on the same page, right? Because there's going to be moments where y'all are y'all are not always going to be at the same level. Like, depending on what y'all got going on in y'all's relationship, y'all are not always going to be on that same frequency. So there's going to be times where I'm feeling down and out or she's feeling down and out. Like, if you have a solid relationship... If you have a solid connection with that person, I feel like that person is going to be understanding to your plight and be like, all right, look, I got you for right now because I see that you're trying. I see that you're trying to come up. I see that you're trying to, like, get yourself back into a position where you can be worthy of this relationship. You know what I'm saying? So for that, I'll stick by your side. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to, like, you know what I mean, jump ship. You see what I'm saying? No, no, of course. course. And that's my point. Like, you know. I get, it's not about leading and following per se. I get, I get it's, your point. I don't because know. what if the leader falls? Then what? Well, the leader, if the leader falls, because I'm looking at it more like coach player, coach team captain, or whatever. Okay. But like if the leader falls, then as the leader, the leader can't stay down as long as. Well, the that's player. that's why it's good to have a queen that's recognizing that you are the leader. But and like, like, all right, I'm gonna get you back up to leader status. I'm gonna help you get back up. You know what I'm saying? Get you back on your feet and help you yeah, get that. Yeah, that's help you, you pick up that crown. Support. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a like, support. Right. Like, help you get like, that crown off the ground. But and then, like, like, you know. But then when you go to, like, an RPG thing and you want to go to support in the attacker, so you have the <laughs> one you have the one who's slaying the dragons and you have yeah. the one that's doing the healing. The healing, the defense, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The tank right. and everything else. Yeah. And I'd say that women are better as the support and men are th- better as the attackers. Because true, whenever I mean, you put that woman on that attacker, she could do it for a little bit, but like to put all that stress on her, on top of her, feeling that she still needs that support from her man, mm-hmm. and to like she's like gonna be conflicted, and that's where the conflict. I think it from. could be the same set for a guy too, though. Like, what if you a guy's busy on so so focused on attacking, but then now he has this excess burden of trying to be a healer at the same time? It's like, nah, the guy that's should a have to be a healer. But that's what I'm saying. And and a woman well, shouldn't have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. But why would a guy have to be a healer if he's the one already providing anyway? Because if you want to go back to role-playing RPG, like, he's the attacker. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? So why should he worry about like having why would she be slacking with the healing and the support? <laughs> why should the guy? Why 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 is the guy slacking on the attack? No, well the thing is, if a dude <laughs> we need damage, dude, if, we need we need we if, need if uh, the dude loses his job, then that is slacking on the attack. But what's the equivalence of that for the woman? What is she gonna lose? Slacking on the support, the healing, the nurturing. But how how does that happen out of her control? Because like a dude losing his job could be layoffs. But like how is she? What if the guy's his own what if the man's his own boss? What if he's an entrepreneur? Yeah, exactly. That's why he wouldn't lose. Well then that's it that's in his own control. It is. If you're your own boss, you, you it's literally Wait, on okay. you. Okay, if if he's his own boss and he starts losing money within and he's, that, and he starts tripping and he's and like he falling, going, slacking, falling off, and yeah. then she, and she has to step up and compensate. Compensate to help. It's not going to last long. If he it's doesn't not, get himself, it's too much, if he it's doesn't too, get himself together, then it's not going. to Yeah, because you're putting too much of a burden on the woman who didn't ask for that. Yeah, but then here we go. So let's say the woman was in that same position, right? For them, for right in that same position where the As man, the guys. where the man was having to pick up the slack for the nurturing, and while at the same time, like it's a lot to ask for. So, and the man didn't ask for that. So you could look at the opposites of no, both. No, no, no. This is why it doesn't work so well. Is only because of this. If that woman is the breadwinner from the start, okay, okay, and that and that guy is more. Let's say they switch roles. So let's say that woman is the breadwinner. And he's the nurturer. And, and the, he's the nurturer. Okay. And then she loses it. Uh-huh. And now this nigga got to step up. Right. Do you really think that nigga's going to go from zero to 100 as easily as the woman could? Zero to 100. As far as like. To what? To like stepping up and be able to provide with the opportunity. No, because I think it's harder for a man out exactly. in society in general. I know, I know. To it, like, it is unfortunate to, reality of it to gain success yeah. or to gain monetary gain. It's more, it's more opportunities. There's more, for there's more woman. opportunities for a woman to exactly. do it. I mean, even though those, sometimes those opportunities may be yeah, some soul grimy. Some shit. Some soul yeah, it might be shit. yeah, it might be yeah. grimy. Like, or you yeah, might have work. to yeah, sex work or mm-hmm. whatever. But sex work is more open to a woman than it is a man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 100%. That's why, I like that, and that's why I was already looking at it from the rip of why it, it might not work out. Because then, on top of that, even if that woman goes that route and actually is able to do it, then now this dude feels the type of way that he he feels even more emasculated because his woman had to go that measure mm-hmm. to compensate for his inadequacies. Right. So it's just like a double edged sword. See, I'm I'm more looking at it like from a more like balanced, like you know. It's bad either way, right? Like, yeah. if the woman has to overcompensate, if the man has to overcompensate, overcompensation's bad <laughs> in a relationship. Not healthy for relationships. Yeah, it's not healthy. Like, there needs... To, and that's why roles are important. Yeah. I I truly believe roles is what keeps relationships strong. Because roles, it, it keeps you limited to focus on two things instead of having to focus on five things. Just focus on these two things. This is your role to focus on these two or these three things right here. Don't go outside of that. Then the woman's role is to focus on these other three things. She don't go outside of that. And together as a unit, y'all are, y'all, you know what I mean? That comes with communication as well. Right. Yeah. That's the main thing that a lot of relationships lack is that communication. They just assume that they know what the other person wants or what the other person deems to require for successful relationship. Well, Right. Actually addressing specifics within one another and everything else like that. Right. How much time we got left? We you got know? 20. 20. 20? Yeah. Um, oh, you want to roll, roll to? Man, we got to digress. I know. We went on a tangent like a mother. I know. You know, I know. Like, this is very true. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is what we do on Western Talk Podcast. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes this is what we do. You podcast. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, but, we can play the <laughs> WNBA one. Now, actually, let's play the short first, and then we can do the WA, the same order. If y'all can do that for me, please. I just want to show this little speed run real quick. Going to throw a couple uh, of things out there really quick at the end here. Uh, Women have dating on easy mode as compared to men. Any woman can be a slut. Very few men can be a slut. Women don't need game slash riz. You just have to show up. Only traditional women deserve traditional treatment. As most women are not traditional, men should not pay on first dates. Men with high body counts are allowed to date and desire women who are virgins or have low body counts. Plastic surgery such as breast implants, lip fillers, BBL makes women look worse. Men generally find tattoos on women at best neutral or negative. Men should not date women who go out to bars, clubs, parties, raves 
makeup is a lie age gap relationships between consenting adults is 100 percent okay feminism is not about equality it's about securing benefits for women men are and have been more oppressed than women women have equal rights to men and actually have more rights than privileges female privilege is greater than male privilege there's no such this thing as like male privilege in totality you can be <laughs> sexist towards men you can be racist towards white people white people have culture on average men are physically stronger than women technically it would not be straight to date a bleep <laughs> whoa i know he did he spam run the fuck What's out of that bleep? shit wait, 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 wait. The, the bleep was because his youtube guidelines oh Trey. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so what was that, he? Give us some context. What was okay. he reading there? So, like, this is everything that he's gone through since he started that podcast, and all the questions and debates that he's had. So he was like saying, so he's arguing his side of every debate that he's had on the podcast. So, like the last one with the trans thing is that you're he thinks is gay if you date a trans woman that's biologically a man. I agree. Exactly. So, it's a, it, I but mean, then there was a girl on the podcast before that says that's transphobic for you to think that way. No, no. So because, that's where that last part is bleep because like when you go into that conversation, that's how you get demonetized because you can't just have certain conversations. There like were certain things I didn't agree with him on. Yeah, yeah, rant. yeah. I, but that I, part, that part I, I agree that, though. I agree with that part. The reason why I play that is that I agree with most of the stuff they said. Some stuff that maybe me and you don't even agree with. Yeah, yeah. We can play it again because it's only like... Uh, yeah, can you run that back? Yeah, run that, you can back, run that back. And then we <laughs> I can address hear, which Because he was ones. talking kind of fast, but there was some... I, I, like there's some that I... There's most of the things he said I agree with. Going to throw so a couple some of things out there really quick at the end here. Uh, women have dating on easy mode as compared to men. Any woman can be a slut. Very few men can be a slut. Women don't need game slash riz. You just have to show up. Only traditional women deserve traditional treatment. As most women are not traditional, men should not pay on first dates. Men with high body counts are allowed to date and desire women who are virgins or have low body counts. Plastic surgery such as breast implants, lip fillers, BBL makes women look worse. Men I generally agree. find tattoos on women at best neutral or negative. Men should not date women who go out to bars, clubs, parties, raves. Makeup is a lie. Age gap relationships between consent Consenting adults is 100% okay. Feminism is not about equality. It's about securing benefits for women. Men That's are and have about. been more oppressed than women. Women have equal rights to men and in actuality have more rights than privilege. Female privilege say. is greater than male privilege. There's Plus no such thing as like male privilege credit. in totality. You can be sexist <laughs> towards men. You can be racist towards white people. White people have That's culture you don't on average. Well, I mean, that's one part. Yeah. I mean, it's multiple. Technically, it would not be straight to date a bleep. There's, there's most. It's not just the right, the white people. I knew that or, one was. Yeah, it's one not that. Put, not just that, but I mean, obviously, like that's a whole can of worms. But there's other parts that he said I don't agree with either. What's one? Um, where he said, well, just to kind of come off the top, like the tattoo part. It's like, I mean, some tattoos are nice though. You know what I'm saying? Like some. I mean, not. He said neutral, if not bad, if not bad, and I don't agree with that. I, I because some because some some because people. I would rather not have my tattoos. I, I, I would said, rather at least not have the ones that are on my back. Right. Mm. I've already now, removed now, some from my wrists and my neck. So. If he's talking about the extreme side of it, where like you're literally covered like from like blasted. neck down well, to blasted. your damn toe, like yeah, literally I blasted. That's what, yeah, that's what I think of. That's not. Cool. I, that's what I, I agree with that. Like, like that's blasted, like, like let's no. say you have like sleeves. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like like we were playing MGK like. The disc oh, track that his new shit? No, no, the no. The black no. shit that he got all over him now? Well, he has, he's literally tatted to the point where he has, like, overall. It looks like he's wearing overalls. Like, he has, like, <laughs> a... He's literally tatted, like, everywhere. That is not cool. I, I, I agree with that. That's too much. That is a little too much, bro. I mean, like, if you're making a music and, uh... I mean, it's whatever, but... Well, yeah, but I'm saying... Well, we're, we're speaking in the, I mean, confines of, like, just... Let's say MGK wasn't famous, and he was just a regular ass dude walking With those down black the sidewalk. Tattoos. He probably wouldn't find a job, honestly. That's unless what I'm saying. Not a smoke shop or hot topic or right. a tattoo shop. And that's or just he the has to cover is. up. And you know he'll have to wear like long sleeves. Right. You'd have to wear turtlenecks, bro. Turtlenecks, yeah, pretty much. You'd have to that's wear like I'm a saying. full body suit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that part. And then there was another thing where he said uh, uh, he was talking about uh, women. Or not women privilege. Um, damn, he's going so fast. I wish you could just. 
You want to play one more time? Let me play one more time. Oh yeah, God. play it one more time. <laughs> one more time. Hey, hey, it's look, look. One more story. One it's time for the one time. Out there really quick at the okay. end here. Uh, women have dating on easy mode as compared to men. Any woman can be a slut. Very few men can be a slut. Women don't, don't need game slash riz. You just have to show up. Only traditional women deserve traditional treatment. As most women are not traditional, men should not pay on first dates. Men with high body counts yeah. are allowed to date and desire women who are virgins or have low body counts. Plastic surgery such as breast implants, lip fillers, BBL makes women look worse. Men generally find tattoos on women okay. at best neutral or negative. Men should not date women who go out to bars, clubs, parties, raves. Makeup is a lie. Age gap relationships between consent adults is 100% okay. Feminism is not about equality. It's about securing benefits for women. Men Agreed. are and have been more oppressed than women. Women have equal rights to men and in actuality have more rights than privileges. Female privilege is greater than male privilege. There's no such this thing as like male privilege in totality. Like in you can be sexist towards men. You can be racist towards white people. White people have culture. On average, men are physically stronger than women. Technically, it would not be straight to date a bleep. <laughs> <laughs> I probably agree with like maybe 60% of what he said. One of the things he said that he did, damn, I missed it though. I know, right? Damn it. Because I was like, let's say everything else. Um, oh, why not shit. date, why not date chicks that go out? What if, what yeah, if, no, I don't agree with that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't drink necessarily. when I go out. I don't, I don't go agree out with that and do one. Damn like, it. drugs. Well, 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 here's the thing. I, I think I think, I think, I halfway agree with that Do you remember part. one of the ones, the first ones that you disagreed with that I was like, nah, I ain't with you with that one. God damn it. I'm not bad. Yeah, like thank you. Uh, shout out to, uh, women shout out to, uh, uh, to Quincy. To men. And, uh, Any woman can be a slut. Very few men can be a slut. That women one. don't need games. That one. Right you there. just have to show up. Very Only few traditional men can women be a slut. deserve traditional you don't think treatment. Very few, As most women think. are not traditional, oh, men should not pay on first dates. Men with high body counts are allowed to date and desire women who are virgins or have low body counts. Plastic surgery such as breast implants, lip fillers, BBL makes women look worse. Men generally find tattoos on women at best neutral or negative. Men should not date women who go out to bars, clubs, parties, raves, makeup is a lie. Half. Age gap relationships between consenting adults is 100% okay. Feminism is not about equality. It's about securing benefits for women. Men are and have been more oppressed than women. <laughs> women have equal rights to men and in actuality have more rights than privileges. Female privilege <sighs> is greater than male privilege. There's no such this thing as like male privilege in totality. You can be Wars. sexist towards men. You can be racist towards white people. White people have culture. <laughs> On average, men are physically stronger than women. Technically, it would not be straight to date a bleep. <laughs> Who is that? His he, name is Brian Atlas. His name is Brian. Yeah, he has a podcast called the Whatever Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's in Santa Barbara, California. Yeah. Yeah, he's. I don't agree with like most a lot of what he said. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over like full disclosure. Jay. Yeah, yeah, I agree with some of his stuff. <laughs> so, some. so with the slut thing. So most women can be sluts, but only a few men can be sluts. So what do you think? What do you? That's what do you? Bullshit. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I'm. A, uh, here's my counter. Own it, here's bro. This is, my, this, this is my oh, dynamic. Hold on, hold on. Here's, here's. This is more my stratosphere. So watch this. I, watch, watch this. What's a man whore? What's a man whore? Yeah. I don't believe in man whores. But so you don't think? I think men are whore makers. All right, Jesse Lee Peterson. So, so no, so watch this, watch this. Slut maker. Yes, yes. Watch this, watch this. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why I say that because whore tin the whore maker. Because <laughs> whore tin the whore maker. Hey, that has a ring to it. That has a yeah, ring I, to know. It. I know. So. So, men are the ones running through. Okay, women are hold on. Ran through. Let me give you. Because let me the give men you something. Are the ones going inside? I'm glad you it's said that. So this is where I do agree with where you're going with this. Men are the penetrators. Women are the receivers. Yeah, yeah, penetrated. Yeah. I know it sucks. <laughs> it sucks, but it's the truth. I mean, it is the it is the truth. It is the truth. Like we are the givers. Women are the receivers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, when it comes to that aspect of it. But as far as the generality of messing around with multiple women out you know out in, out in the world, yeah, you can be a, a man can be a whore. Yeah. I'm about to red pill you. Well. Do you really think most men are out here fucking? <sighs> You know that's not. There, there's been a lot of instances where You're right. where I believe that, that and they weren't. <laughs> I and that's what there's I'm saying. There's been so many times where I believe the it's person I was game. talking to was she out was there out. fucking other girls, but they, they really weren't. Right, and I was embarrassed for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I, here's helps, uh, it helps my point. So I agree with you on that question. Women have a lot more sexual activity than men 
in today's society, in today's era. That's true. I agree. Yeah. It's harder for a man to get sexual access than it is a woman. Most women don't yeah. find most men attractive. But most men find most women attractive. Like, at least fuckable. Yeah. So, therefore, if most women are fucking, they're only fucking a small amount of men. It's, okay, let's, let's simplify this even more. It's easier for a woman to go up to a man and get sexual pleasure from that man yeah. than it is for a man to go up to a woman and get sexual yeah. pleasure from that woman. So, they have to compensate yeah. with game. So we have to compensate with game. Yeah, and most men don't got game. Women I feel don't. Like everyone needs Riz. No, nah. going back yeah. to the the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the point like, board over there. Well, 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 women don't need Riz; they just need to show up. But like, bitch. I well, got the riz. women have to not. Well, y- y'all's y'all's Riz is a little bit more simplified than ours. We have to complexify our shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to like come with like a bunch of different weapons and like a bunch of different mechanics and. Y'all could just literally get there, show up pretty, look fly, you know. Obviously, y'all have to talk. You can't just sit there and say nothing. But you, 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 you guys have to speak and have a conversation a little bit. That's a little game. Yeah, it's you know, thing about the women. it's a little it's game. A yeah, I, think I have women. a very like manly or man um, masculine like mindset too. On, Perspective honestly. on it. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's it. the thing, though, Jordan. It's cool is about you is that you're the type to initiate. So most women, a lot of women aren't initiators though. Exactly, like that's that's not that's an abnormal that's exactly. an abnormality. That's not common. So most women are gonna be good responding because I always say this. This is one of the rare takes that I do not get enough credit for. Is that <laughs> saying women are socially superior to men? So that's why whenever a man comes onto them, they respond so. Because, well, but but that's because it's natural for women like and socially but, to adapt. But that's only because they've had it done to them so much. Yeah, since it's puberty. repetition. Since it's puberty. experience. Even though we both men and women could go through puberty, but a man's puberty looks way more awkward. But a woman's puberty is way more filled out. That grown ass men are hollering at them, even though they're still not I, legal. I think women go through that. Me getting hit on that dating experience way earlier, yeah, than exactly, men and that's where they gained that experience. Because and think about when a social woman superiority, when a woman starts filling out, yeah. she starts like getting puberty. She'll start getting hit on by like people in their twenties. Yeah, I, I've like seen when it. you're Dude, eighteen, I was I've thirteen years old, but, having eighteen, nineteen year olds yeah, trying to get at me all. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So exactly. yeah, y'all get that experience early, where y'all y'all get it from an older person yep. who's more experienced in life, and y'all get to get those trial and error. My second girlfriend cheated on me when I was thirteen. We we're thirteen in seventh grade. My second girlfriend cheated on me with a sixteen year old in high school. <laughs> That's not, that's not too big of a my, that's my, not too my, big my, my thing is, you think I'm getting a 16-year-old girl? Right. At 13, 12, 13? Hell right. the fuck right. no. no. That's the whole no. point right. is that she's already that much more advanced than me just for being like, we're going through puberty at the same time. Right. But it's two different experiences right. where yeah. she's getting high school attention in middle school for her puberty. Here, but then like, I'm just lucky to be with her. Here's another example. For here's another puberty. example. It's just the a truth. freshman, a freshman chick in high school is more prone to dating a senior male than a freshman male dating a senior chick exactly. in high school. Exactly. Yeah. That's the by point. Far. That's the point. By far. That's what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. No senior chick wants and to be dating the, a fucking freshman. That's the freshman. advantage. That's embarrassing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Her for dating you know, that freshman. Like, what's wrong with her? She's, she's right. a walking red flag. There's nothing wrong with that senior. Right. Guy dating a freshman girl, right? But like that senior girl dating a freshman guy is like, right? Red flag. Like, ew, bitch. Now translate. Exactly. Now can't trans- get to a grown ass exactly. man or what? Like, right. Exactly. Now translate that into like grown. And era, then as we get older, era. it gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. The aspect. Yeah, oh, this older a man. Dude, I'm this older, older dude dating, dude dating a twenty something year old or eighteen year old. He's a creep. He's yeah, a yeah. pedophile. Uh, a thirty five year old. Yeah, thirty five year old. Advantage of her. Right. A and 35 year old dating an but, 18 year old. But, but that 21 year old dating that 21 year old girl dating the 35 year old man. Oh, that's she's, more acceptable. She's more mature. Yeah, it's more acceptable. She knows what she wants. Yeah, it's more acceptable. It's just the truth, man. It's the double but standards. But if we but if we but if we do it like yeah, a man, like say like, me right now. Daniel said it. Yeah. Me, it's, it's different when we do it. <laughs> right. Me right now. Me right now, right? Like, it's okay say, if you do it. It's different if we do it. What what about a, a like a 30 something year old woman dating someone in their 20s that's uh, happened to me 
I mean, because I feel like that's happening. No, nobody wants to holler at me nowadays unless they're like twenty five or younger. Yeah, it's wild. Because but been, she still been got there. it. Uh, hey. I've, been, I've been that. I've been that twenty something year old holler at older girls. Me too. And it's because like they're, yeah. so they're, it's not weird. Big, uh, no, it's okay. not because when it, it's, it don't last though. I'll say I, that. Yeah. No, that's for sure. It's because, it's like, the reason why a younger dude hollers at older girls is because the older girls going to get straight to the point. Straight to they're the point. Like and that. they probably got more paper. They're more papered up so yeah, to take oh, care no. of them or kind of slip something the, in their the pocket. Fine, the finest girl know. I messed with, she was seven years older than me. I was 23. She was 31. And she was a nurse. And she had three kids. See? And she was making more than me as a bartender still with the three mm. kids. And, yeah. Uh, it was short, especially but. if they're ER nurses, man. ER yeah, nurses she was. She was too. Yep. We so, got, yep. we got, we got a couple minutes, yo. How much? So you wanna? So let's shout out your your podcast. Like, yeah, we gotta plug yeah, that. Like, yes, you so got some brewing. You got, you got some. Yeah, I you finally got some. made my own channel and uh-huh. uh, talk to the so, people. So at uh, first, at first, I uh, kind of. Un- unknowingly stole somebody's name and then I kind of watched our podcast and we mentioned it on the last one the um the call her daddy podcast yes so, so I completely forgot that about before. that I completely forgot about that and I at first I made it and it was just call her daddy and they took it and then I was like oh somebody was like oh no look there's this person already doing this just be careful so now my new uh podcast channel on um YouTube is she sick with it s h e s i c k W I T H I T, just how it's spelled. And um, I'm going to, you know, be having sit downs and guests. Uh, if I, I've been fixing a lot of stuff at my house recently, I recently repaired and fixed my water heater um, after finding a, a fairly, you know, like a two year old water heater that was broken on Marketplace for super cheap. Um, I basically got my whole water heater and installed it myself for 60 bucks. So, um, I, I really just, like, want to share with other women that they can fucking fix things around their house, too. Mm. It's really easy. So whenever I do repairs, I'm going to start recording them. And, of course, uh, be cracking jokes along the way. I might have people with me doing it. You know, mm-hmm. that's better than Call Her Daddy because I've been following she's Call Her Daddy. She's sick with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. sick with it. It's better than Call Her Daddy. But, you I'm know, happy that... It didn't end up being that name because call her daddy. I like I've it more, following. honestly. I like I like yeah, she's, sick, she's with sick with it. Yeah, because yeah. because then we'll be recording some music sessions and stuff in my my little studio at home, and uh, I'll I'll document that and have interviews with whoever's in there doing that. So because it's, it's not just all about. It's going to be a very broad. Uh, it's not show so glamorized type of uh, materialistic sh- uh, shallow because like call her daddy is more like a. Oh, Megan Fox is the guest, and like they talk about more of shallow shit, like Hollywood like type shit. But you're more genuine, authentic. It's it's type uh, of feel. Well, just call me daddy is like something I say all the time when I fix something. I'm just call yeah. me daddy, dude. Exactly, and, uh, it's a different concept because like that that original car daddy, I know about it because I follow it because I like to watch my enemies as well. So <laughs> yeah, so they're like pretty much like. If men can move like this, then women can do this too. Not even just like in a handy way, but like in a sexual way. They think that they could kind of like that sprinkle, sprinkle thing where one of my segments was going to talk about drizzle, drizzle. Yeah. So uh, it's like the whole, uh, if these men are going to be just trying to fuck you, then you might as well try to milk their pockets as much as you can while you do so. That's like the whole collar daddy finessing man. Like the anti Kevin Samuels, anti yeah, that's uh, not what I'm about. Yeah, yeah. like misandrous hate men, take advantage of men, you know, finesse men type of thing. That's what Caller Daddy is really originally based off of. So when I saw you making that name, I was like, I don't see Jordan as a type to be trying to copy their style, having like these porn stars and was not these my type of <laughs> feminist act- actresses that are like men ain't shit. Uh, and like downplaying men to glorify women, but oh, more no. is like women could do it too, and that's where like me and my mom come to common grounds too. It was because like my mom's the feminist that like women could do it too, but then like feminists nowadays is more like anti man pro. We don't need no man. 
Yeah, we, we don't do need everything. no man. Yeah, exactly. Everything on a what, uh, What's uh, the point of uh, men anyway? Let's just well, get rid of them. Yeah, I'll exactly. I'll take a man and a woman. Yeah, I right. I love you I all. Man. Come here, baby. Sleep right. over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that bashing shit. Yeah, so I'm anti-bashing. Okay. Well, with that being said, we got to wrap it up. Uh, it's your boy, Juniani. Follow me on all platforms. Just type in Juniani, J-U-N-Y-A-N-I-I. -I. And I'm sure I'll pop up. You'll see my picture. Just follow me, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Recognize Entertainment, LLC, Facebook. <laughs> Hit me up with the hats if you want one. Uh, personal page. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's that. And you already know, man. It's your boy, H2O. Four years of who. The Cameroon Goon. All that. I'm on all the platforms everything. And it's another episode that we just knocked out. And then. A. It's Jay Hall, y'all. Follow me on my new YouTube channel. There's nothing on there yet, but there will be. She's sick with it. Um, I have my clothing line at Day Drip Custom on all social media platforms. I can do pretty much anything. Holler. Yes, sir. Like, share, subscribe. We don't usually say that in the beginning because, you know, we don't worry about that. We know y'all coming. Y'all are coming. All right. But like, subscribe, share this ish. And this is another episode of Wisdom Talk Podcast. And we out. Peace. Love you. <laughs> we did it.